Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha Shasha and today I'm going to be giving you my top tips on making those tiny little resin shakers that are so fiddly, especially when you're using UV resin. Tip number one would be to make sure that your mold is nice and clean. Here I am just using a bit of tape. You can use normal salad tape, bezel tape, whatever tape you like. And I'm just getting off any dust, any bits of glitter, just making sure that everything is nice and clean. Tip number two would be to have your UV resin already mixed and ready before you start pouring. One of the mistakes that I've made is mixing up one color, pouring that into a mold, curing that, and then mixing a second color. And then by the time it comes to me pouring it into the mold, it's already started to break away from the mold because it's still kind of curing even if you stopped using the light. So, you know, it's already like broken away from the mold and then you're gonna get it leaking down the sides and it's just not pretty. Now this next tip is completely optional. It depends on how small that your cavities are. But if you noticed in this little watermelon slice, there were teeny tiny little pips and you need to have something very small to put the resin in. So here I'm using a dotting tool. You can use a toothpick, a dotting tool, anything that is really, really small. Make sure that you definitely have one of those there to hand. And this right here is a no-no. Do not put on your UV light anywhere near the resin that you just mixed because yes, you guessed it, it will cure inside of your silicone cups and then you'll have to mix more of it again. And sometimes you just don't have enough resin to do that. Trust and believe I've learned that the hard way. Tip number five, five? Four, five, I think we're on tip number five. <laughs> tip number five would be to make sure that you don't cure that first layer too, too much because as I said earlier, it will start to peel away from the mold. So give it a quick cure and then you wanna pour on your second layer. Tip number six, get yourself a decent UV lamp. The one that I'm using here is just one that you would use for your nails. Um, you can use the tiny little UV torches, of course you can, but those are really good for like just really quick flash cures. Um, you wanna get like a decent sized UV lamp to do a proper full cure. I'm using the small nail lamp for this piece because obviously it's small, but for bigger pieces, I do have a slightly larger lamp as well. These are very easy to find on Amazon or eBay or whatever. So definitely get yourself a decent one. Tip number seven, if you're worried about any sort of stickiness inside of your shaker, then you can either go again with some more resin or you can use some no wipe UV top coat. That's usually what I use, um, but I'd run out. So for this video, I just use some more of my resin and I just put a very thin layer in there and I cured that. Really, really thin layers of UV resin cure absolutely beautifully. Um, also, don't worry about any little like air bubbles that you might see on the side where it may look a little bit cracked or whatever that's absolutely fine because you're going to be covering that over with more clear resin anyway and as for air bubbles inside your piece you can easily pop those either with a lighter or with a toothpick or even with a dotting tool as you saw me do here Tip number eight is your shaker film. Now, usually you would get shaker film inside of the Sophie and Toffee box if shaker molds are provided. If you don't have any of this, then you can just go ahead and look online for some acetate sheets. They work exactly the same. Um, your shaker film sheets normally will come with a plastic on the top and on the bottom. So make sure that you do take that off before you place it onto your piece because otherwise it's gonna look really, really cloudy. Um, but one thing that I did find that actually helped was when I cut out my piece, I don't cut it to like exactly the same size as the resin piece that I've made. I do it just a tad smaller because this way I'm not having to like fight with trying to get it to close. So as you can see here, I've just put a little bit of UV resin along the perimeter. I'm curing that, but then when I dome over that, it seals it in so much better than if I tried to make it exactly fit because you're just never gonna get it right. Well, I mean, you might do if you're a genius, but I'm not and I never get it right, so. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've started to do that now and I've just found it works so much better. Tip number nine, filling your shakers. Okay, so some shaker molds come with a little groove on the side, which is where you're supposed to put your needle to fill it in. Um, others don't. So if yours doesn't, then you can just use a little hand drill and drill a hole either in the side, the top or the bottom, um, you know, to just insert your needle and put your oil in that way. Um, either way is absolutely fine. 
What I tend to do is when I'm filling up my syringe, I don't do it with the needle attached. I take the needle away, I fill up the syringe that way and then I reattach the needle because then I am not fighting with the syringe and eventually breaking it. Trust me, I have done this so many times. Um, after I've done that, I of course have to seal it up with some more resin, but you can also put a little charm on the end if you want to. You can put a little eye pin in there, seal it up with the resin, add a nice little dangly charm. However you choose to finish off your piece is totally up to you. Um, then do make sure though that you go around all the perimeters with some more UV resin just to seal everything in. And uh, particularly as well, if you are putting a ring on the back of it, make sure that you have really secured that bad boy in because the last thing you want is for your shaker to fall off your hand because that does not look pretty. But this does. How gorgeous is this? I mean, come on. I'm so, so pleased with how this turned out. I love the tiny little watermelons inside of it and I love the teeny tiny little strawberries inside of this one. Oh, I absolutely adore making shakers. If you enjoyed this video and would like to have more tips like this, then don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. And here are some more arts and crafts videos for you to sink your teeth into. Take care, darlings, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.